Good afternoon and welcome to the Matchroom Bubble for the weigh-in. Lawrence Akoli against Christoph Gravatsky for the vacant WO Cruiserweight title plus a packed undercard. Not long to go, top of the hour, the undercard will start weighing in. So delighted to say that MC David Diamante joins us for the top of the stream. David, how are you keeping, how are your travels to Dallas and how much are you looking forward to Saturday? It's been great actually. Um, Dallas was incredible. Really great card. I mean, a night of rematches, right? We had McCaskill, Bracus, and then, of course, uh, Juan Francisco Estrada and Chocolatito. Uh, and uh, great night of fights. So Dallas was great. It's a city I really enjoy. And uh, now we're back here in London, another city I enjoy, and a great fight card that I think we're all going to enjoy. What about next weekend as well? Because, look, I don't want to not talk about what we're doing here, but Gibraltar, The Rock, a chance to go and uh, announce a rematch there. Have you been there before? These are these are quite cool places to go and announce. They really are. And I mean, even the week after that, we're going to Uzbekistan. But but, uh, but Gibraltar, I'm really excited about. I was there in the early 90s. Um, I took a boat from Algeciras down to Morocco, traveled through Morocco, all through Marrakesh and Rabat and uh, Tangier and uh, Casablanca. So that was many years ago. So I haven't been to Gibraltar since. Um, as far as I understand, this will only be the second professional card to ever take place there. I think there was like a two-fight card that took place there you know, a while ago. I think Carl Greaves was actually... True story. Yeah, yeah Carl, Carl Greaves, Greaves, who's actually going to be in Gibraltar. He's uh, looking after Kane Baker on the undercard. So uh, it's a real box-ticking thing for him. I think he got married out in Gibraltar as well. So to go and fight, get married and train and fight today, it's going to be brilliant. Yeah, he's got the big connection to Gibraltar. So it's funny because I'm doing this podcast now. I think I'm going to have him on the podcast next week. We got, we're going to have to talk about Carl Greaves and this Gibraltar connection. But it's a, it's a really great fight. It's a compelling fight. I mean, I think it'd be easy to just say, look, uh, Dillian White should, should get it done. I mean... We thought he should have gotten it done the first time. Um, it looked like he was on his way to getting it done until, you know, he got stretched. Um, it, it's just you never know. You can never count out Povetkin. Incredibly tough fighter. Um, and he always shows up, uh, you know, really looking to win. That's it next weekend. But this weekend, Britain could have a new world champion in Lawrence Akoli. Poland could have... Another world champion, Christoph Gravatsky, retaining, uh, becoming a, a three-time world champion, I think we're saying. Um, how excited are you for this? You've done most of Lawrence Akoli's pro career, I would have thought, and you've also done a son of Gravatsky's fights as well. Yeah, I, you know, I like this fight. I think that Lawrence should get the job done. I, I believe he's the favorite in this fight. He's a big guy, you know. I think he's, what, 6'5 or something. Yeah, well, how tall are you? I'm 6'3", but... Well, he's slightly taller, ever so slightly taller than you, so 6'5". Yeah, yeah, yeah he's 6'5", um, but thank God I don't have to fight him. But, you know, um, yeah, he, he's, he's been doing some great work with Shane McGuigan, and he's just been looking really good. I think Lawrence is the type of guy, he's evolved, uh, and I really like seeing that. So, And, and also, I think Wawatsky, uh, as, as good as he can be, and we've seen him in the past at certain times, um, He's been kind of inactive, so I think that could be part of the storyline here. So we'll see. I, I think, without a doubt, Akoli's a favorite, but you never know what could happen. And uh, Akoli could be the next in a long line of English cruiserweight champions. Before I let you go, because I don't want to keep you from announcing, uh, your pick for the undercard, the sleeper on the card that we should most look forward to. You know, this is killing me because the opening bout that's going to be on Sky Sports Facebook and YouTube is uh, Bradley Ray and Lee Cutler. It's a Nixon Hill fight. Both guys are undefeated. I love this fight. I wish that this fight was on main TV, but I think partly because Shane McGuigan's doing so many corner duties, he needs time between. But uh, that's a fight that everyone should watch. So tune in early to the Sky Sports Facebook and YouTube channels for the uh, Cutler-Ray fight. David, I'll let you get back up on stage. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's uh, in, in play substitutions. Ricky, just on that cross there, we are live. Uh, great to see you. Um, a lot of people will be thinking, uh, wouldn't expect him to see you till next week, but here with Brad Ray, that's right. Yeah, me with Brad Ray. Um, people say, you've been in a few bubbles now, but I've been, I've been in a bu bubble for years, haven't I? But uh, no, it's. Um, it's good. It's for so long in lockdown, you know. The, there was no fights coming coming uh, to the forefront, were they? But you know, I've been here a few times. I'm Gibraltar. Uh, next next week with Campbell for his debut. Going to be a very proud uh, proud night for the family. But yeah, here with Brad Ray, he fights Lee Cutler in a genuine 50-50 match, which. Uh, the winner then can go on to some sort of title shot, you know what I mean, whether it be English or something like that. So it's a big night for, for Brad, one of our Manchester boys, yeah. Boxing has really st struggled during the pandemic. Um, but one thing that has come out of it is this no easy fights. Fighters willing to take chances against other undefeated prospects. Cutler Ray, 
just can't be a bad fight. And you applaud both of them because they could have gone another 12 months without taking a big risk like this, but they both sort of jumped at the chance to get in there and, and, and one of them could lose their undefeated record if, unless it's a draw, obviously. It is, but, you know, to be honest, it's nothing's happening, you know what I mean? At the end of the day, you know, we feel very, you know, the, what Matchroom Boxing have done and um, and Frank Warren and, and Mick Hennessy, you know, just to all, all the promoters, you know, to you know to, to put the shows on so the boxing fans are, but, yeah, you're right, you know, you're being to made bigger fights earlier and that's, you know, there's no point in moaning about it, it's just the, the position that uh, you're in and um, if, he, if Brad and Lee didn't accept that opportunity and they wanted to hang fire they might not be fighting till, the, till, till summer September, October you know what I mean and you, you, you can't do that and I feel sorry for so many lads up and down the country that you know um, that are on the ticket deals and they're depending on crowds coming in so whether they can get fights or not so an opportunity to come like Brad and Lee they've got to take this opportunity and that's what they've both done so fair play to them Two more, I think, before we get started, uh, how are the nerves for, for next week? Uh, you and Matthew, it's a big night for Campbell, and look, you know, it, it doesn't help because we're really hyping it up. It's going to be a huge night for him. Uh, he, but if he's got the hat and jeans, he seems to be taking it all in, the, all in his stride. I mean, if, he's, if he is nervous, he's not showing it. Well, he, you know, you, you, <laughs> so you talk about a chip off the old block. If he is nervous, he most definitely isn't, isn't showing it. I think the whole family are very, very nervous for him, myself, Matthew, but me, me and Matthew's got a job to do. Matthew's his trainer, me as his manager, so we've got to come across as as confident, which we which we, we very are. It's very exciting times, and I absolutely the, the job that Matt Room and Sky Sports have done in order, you know, giving him the build up and that. Yeah, it puts pressure on his shoulders. But you know, what what did he think was going to happen? You know, when he wanted to go pro, so I said he's just got to deal with it. And I, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of his son that to to go in the hardest game of all. You know, with what his dad achieved. You know, I think he deserves credit for that in, in, himself, really. You know, get you know so. Uh, I think if he if he likes me, you know, it'd be my style or my personality. As long as he doesn't, as long as he don't end up with a figure like me, I think we're laughing. <laughs> Last one, look, and if I have to cut you off because they start, then please don't take offence. Uh, huge news this week that AJ and Fury have signed their sides of the the contract. You're very close to both sides, really, because Campbell's under AJ's yeah. management company, and you're very tight with the Furies, and have, he's been in your gym, and you've worked with him extensively. Just how excited are you now? I think I speak for every boxing fan, you know, not not just in Britain, you know, but in the world. I think this is probably the biggest fight Britain's ever seen. You know, two of the heavyweights at the top of their game, do you know what I mean, fighting each other, and um, it's just amazing that we've finally got to be able to put the pen to paper, you know, and, you know, what with the, with the way the COVID is and the situation we're in, but uh, just where it is now, and we'd love to have it in Britain. Might not be the case, but we're just going to have to watch this space. But the main thing, it is on, and it'd be a crying shame because of the COVID or because of whatever circumstances that this fight wasn't able to happen it'd have been a terrible it'd have been a terrible nightmare for British boxing it would have been but it's on you know so really Ricky thank you very much for joining us on the stream I'm going to let you go because we're not too far away from starting I'm just going to step out of vision uh, with Adam Smith he's going to help talk me through the weigh-ins here not long to go um, great to, to catch up with with Ricky. Well, so let's get straight to over to, to David to Diamante. Arena here in London, England for the official weigh-in for Saturday night's big night of boxing action. Now we've got seven fights on the card, three title fights, and at the top of the bill, Lawrence Acoli against Krzysztof Glavatsky for the WBO Cruiserweight Championship of the World. And uh, like I said, it's a great fight card. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. All the action will go out live around the world on Sky Sports and DAZN. And we're sponsored by Betfred, Wow Hydrate, and JD Sports. Seven fights, three title fights. So at this time, let's go ahead and bring the fighters up to the stage so they can face the scale and face each other. Our first fight of the card, it's a great compelling fight. Two undefeated fighters in a Nixonville fight. Eight rounds in the middleweight division. Let's please welcome the fighters as they make their way to the stage. Coming up first, Seven victories, no defeats, four wins coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Bournemouth. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lee Chaos Cutler. Adam, I said it at the top there, this cannot fail to be a good fight. It's a really good matchup, isn't it? And it's fantastic the way that uh, boxing's got through lockdown and we've had these sort of unbeaten clashes. One fifty-eight point three for Lee Cutler. One fifty-eight point three. 
And now making his way to the stage from Stratford, also undefeated, nine fights, nine victories, three of them coming by way of knockout. Please welcome Bradley Ray. Yeah, Cutler just Ray. inside the middleweight di uh, distance, and Brad Ray here, who is... He's so tall. Yeah, very tall, got a lot of potential, I'm beating in nine. 159 bang on for Bradley Ray, 159 bang on. It's just a, a cracking clash, isn't it? A real opportunity from a, for a fighter from Manchester, a fighter from Bournemouth, other different ends of the country coming together. And uh, mate of Chris Billum, Smith Lee Cutler, of course, wants uh, boxing back in down in the South Coast. Be great to go to Bournemouth in the summer, but what about Manchester? Such a great fight city, fight area. How good is Brad Ray? Let's just uh, read out some of the hey, comments Brad, here. On Sky Sports Facebook and YouTube channels. Lee Cutler, so Brad much Ray, uh, support coming in for Miller. Gravotsky on all of these uh, streams this week. Come on, Gravotsky, let's go, champ from Zealand 21. Leonardo, Poland in capital letters. He's very popular, isn't he? Very much so. So, uh, sorry, I'm just going to make my way over to the interview position because uh, hopefully Lee Cutler is just going to come over and give us a very brief word. Lee, just on that mark on the floor there, you can keep your mask off for this. Uh, just how excited are you to be part of this and uh, what do you take from the head's head? He's got a sizable height advantage. What do you uh, have to do to sort of get around those long levers? You're going to see a Canelo versus Callum Smith performance tomorrow and I'm, re I'm, I'm really excited for it. Presumably you're Canelo though. <laughs> 100% yeah, unless I grow a few feet tonight, yeah. <laughs> we talked about it earlier in the week, the build up to this has been an emotional roller coaster. You're on, you're off, you're on, you're off as a Covid reserve. Now you get your chance, just how excited are you to take it? Absolutely buzzing, this is a massive opportunity that can change my life. As long as I perform, get the win, this can change my life. You know, I told my mum and my girlfriend at the start of the year, this, this is the year I'm going to start to change my life and tomorrow is the start of that. Brilliant message, go well. Thank you. Okay, Adam. Mm. It's going to be a very, very good fight, that one. Her. Opportunity knocks, isn't it brilliant? This, they, they wouldn't have had this match, I think, before the pandemic. Fighter, making her way to the stage in our next fight. Six rounds in the featherweight division. Now making her way to the stage. Three victories, eight defeats, hailing from Swindon and fighting out of Malmesbury. Please welcome Lady Luck, Beck Connolly. So Beck Connolly. Connolly stops making her Mother's Day lunch when she gets the call saying, do you fancy it? I think we all knew that she was always going to say yes, uh, never wants to shy away from a challenge. One of the great characters uh, of the last few months, Beck Connolly, amazing. She's uh, had quite a life already and she loves fighting and she gave Ellie Scottney a tough few rounds on Ellie's professional debut, now in with Ramla Ali and she'll give it out. 126.3 for Beck Connolly, 126.3 for Beck Connolly. Yeah, and it's a, very much a learning fight for Ram Ali, and in that respect, it's good matchmaking. It is good matchmaking, because you know what you get with Connolly. And with their head trainers, Richard Moore and Jody Clayton, her young professional record thus far, perfect one fight, one victory, fighting out of London, England, by way of Mogadishu, Somalia. Please welcome Ramla Ali. Get Ali. It's an amazing story, Andy Ramla Ali's uh, background, where she's come from, with her husband uh, Richard and Joby Clayton, part of AJ's team, of course, in the corner, guiding her through. 126.4 for Ramla Ali, 126.4. She had the COVID, and uh, that set her back a bit, but she'll be delighted to be getting her second outing, her second professional outing. She still wants to go to the Olympics, Andy. Ramla Ali and Beck Connolly, six rounds, featherweights, Saturday night. Yeah, that's a uh, very good matchmaking. This should tell us a little bit more about uh, Ramla Ali, who probably felt she wasn't able to to show too much, I think you always get a free pass on a professional debut. Or like all bets are off, effectively. You know, it's a it's a big thing. But um, Eva Hopemeyer came over and um, and she did what she did and, and tried her best. But it didn't it didn't tell us too much 
because there wasn't much coming back. Uh, you would think that Connolly is going to throw back and we will learn a bit more about Ram Morali to, uh, tomorrow night. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, she had everything her own way in her professional debut. I thought she was hard on herself. I thought she boxed well. But uh, we'll learn more about her against uh, Beck Connolly. She's uh, obviously very experienced in the amateur ranks. And uh, how quickly will they move her as a pro? She's 31 now. It's a pretty hot division around the sort of super bantam and featherweight. So, uh, yeah, they've got some good matches to be made. And, uh, you know, Ramler's um, obviously got a, 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 that great story, but also she's... Um, you know, she's well loved in in in, in London and uh, everywhere she goes. Really, she's she's quite a figure too. And I think she's um, you know, it, it's great for women's boxing to have um, you know powerful people like this coming through. And uh, she's a good talker, Ramler. She's a good character. And let's see how far she can go in uh, in the pro ranks. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest at the ring for the evening: ten rounds for the vacant WBA Continental Cruiserweight Championship. Now making his way to the stage, his professional record, nine wins, three defeats, one draw, eight of his nine wins coming by way of knockout. He is the former WBF Intercontinental Champion and the reigning Czech Cruiserweight Champion, fighting out of the Znoima, Czech Republic. Please welcome Vasil Dutsar. Dutsar. So I checked that with our MC before we started. It's Dutsar for, for Vasil. Um, he is a character. We're going to try and catch up with him afterwards. A hard man from a kickboxing, pro kickboxing background, a, a Muay Thai background. Um, never been stopped. 198 and one half pounds for Dutsar. 198 and one half pounds for Vasil Dutsar. And looks like an absolute natural cruiserweight. 198 pounds. And now his opponent making his way to the stage. 11 victories, only one defeat. 10 of his 11 wins coming by way of nine. Knockout. Fighting out of Bournemouth, England, he is the reigning and defending Cutwell Cruiserweight Champion. Please welcome the gentleman, CBS, Chris Billersmith. Smith. Very difficult not to like Chris Billersmith because he is an absolute gentleman. <laughs> He is. He's an absolute gentleman. He's very intelligent. He's a well-rounded, 30-year-old, uh, and he's in real form. Bang on! 199 pounds for Chris Billumsmith. It's almost identical weight to Dutsar. Yeah, they're both in terrific shape, aren't they? I think this is uh, well. It's 10 rounds for the WBA Continental title. Could go long this because, as you mentioned, you know Dutsar's uh, background in the. Uh, Kickboxing and he looks a hard sore, doesn't he? Uh, but Elizabeth can punch 10 knockouts in his 11 victories. And uh, as I said, he's got momentum. He wants that that rematch with React Poor. And there's so many others around. Tommy McCarthy would be a good fight, wouldn't it? And plenty of other cruiserweights. But then eight wins uh, by a knockout inside of his nine wins for Dutsar. So actually, yeah. I think it has got potential. Big punches. It's a good match. Okay, so. Bear with us. Uh, Vasil hasn't got a translator with him, but we're gonna, we are gonna try and have a quick talk with him. Uh, he's just gone to get his clothes back on. So uh, time will tell if he's gonna re-emerge. Uh, he's coming. Get th got a thumbs up there. He's gonna come and join us very, very briefly. The international sign of he's putting his trousers on. Chris Billum Smith against Vasil Dutsar. I'm gonna have to rush him here, which is a. Uh... Hey Vasil, just that, just down here for us. J just on that mark on the floor there. You can take your mask off for this one, Vasil. Vasil, just uh, tell us how excited you are for this fight tomorrow. Yeah, I'm very looking forward for it. I'm very happy, and I wanna just jumping to the ring and. Uh, make a fight, fight crazy, I, I like that and I, I will look, look for, for this. We want a crazy fight as well, so it's good for us. Uh, just a bit about your background, you were a pro kickboxer, you did Muay Thai, you're now a professional boxer, you seem like a real fighting man, you enjoy fighting. Yeah, I'm enjoying, I, I have some fights for MMA too, so I enjoy when, when somebody wants once some some uh, some uh, fighters, I just only ask which weight, and I make make the weight, and I, I go to go to the go to the fight. I like that, and um, it's my uh, it's my piece of spirit, piece of soul, warrior, warrior soul. 
brilliant. Wish you all the best. Definitely the hardest man in the room. MMA, pro kickboxing, boxing, Muay Thai. Am I missing anything out? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Go well. You've got to love this sport, don't you, Andy? <laughs> yeah. Our next contest, six rounds in the featherweight division. Making her way to the stage at this time, four wins against one defeat. She has one win coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Axe Slay Bath, France. Please welcome Mindless Gunglaw. Gunglaw. So, my lease, uh, from what we, we heard from her yesterday, um, Matching is hard it, on the circuit in France. She was a very good amateur at youth level. We didn't get a chance to check what she was at senior level. 116.8 pounds for Miles Gangla. 116.8 for Miles Gangla. Yeah, she's won four or five. She sounded very confident in the, the rather botched interview with Eddie yesterday, but... Thus far, perfect. One fight, one victory. Here is the 2017 Amateur Elite National Champion fighting out of Casper, London, Eddie Scotney. Your prospect of the year. Yeah, Scottie. Yeah, I was just going to say, I've... Uh, I've Put my flag down on this one, Ellie Scottney from Catford. She's 22, she was a terrific amateur, really exciting, and she was brilliant on her pro debut. I think she's um, she's a, a very level-headed young woman. She's uh, She talks well, she loves to fight, and she's really thrilling to watch, honestly. I think she's gonna have a great ride. I think it's gonna be a fascinating professional journey, Ellie Scottney. Is uh, yeah, she's my prospect for this year to watch out for, Andy. I sound like a broken record though, but this is a, this is good matchmaking again. This should tell us more about Ellie Scottney, um, perhaps than we learnt in her professional debut. Although it was a very impressive professional debut. Yeah, I, I was really impressed with her uh, on her debut, and um, I think we're going to be impressed with her again tomorrow. Melis Gangloff, a very different sort of fighter. Ellie Scottney, Melis Gangloff, six rounds. Matchroom Boxing, Saturday night, SSE Arena, Wembley. I think Scotney's got class. I think she's got some pedigree behind her. And um, it's a long, long journey ahead. But uh, I'm really excited about this one. The masks, they do exactly that. They mask what people are doing. But that look like all smiles, but a very intense stare down between the two of them there. Yeah, it's just important business, isn't it? You know, women's boxing has gone through the roof in the last three or four years, you know, led by Katie Taylor and, of course, Clarissa Shields over the other side of the pond. But, you know, Savannah Marshall coming through and Terry Harper and, you know, Shannon Courtney's got her big chance uh, in a few weeks' time. And it's, you know, it's really exciting times. And, you know, you've got Ramler and uh, Ellie both on the bill here. And, um, you know, Chantel Cameron, of course, with that fantastic win. You know, it's, it's a who's who really now, um, just like it is with men's boxing. So, yeah, they've got, they've got real attention and they've got the stage in which to shine on. And, um, you know, someone like Ellie Scottney is going to be as, as exciting as any man. We hope some news on Katie Taylor as well coming soon. Her reappearance. Terry Harper too. Just like knocked back through... Uh, Injury, but I was sent a video of her punching today, though, so she is back hitting the back. Yeah, she is. Ladies and gentlemen, the weigh in for Saturday night continues in this next contest. Ten rounds for the WBA International Super Welterweight Championship. Introducing up first to the stage, the challenger. Professional record 21 victories, only two defeats. He has one draw and seven wins coming by way of Nakia. Presentando de Sueca Comunidad Valenciana. España. Here is the former WBC Latino and the IBF Intercontinental and Spanish Super Welterweight Champion Jorge Portea. Portea. Very much kept himself to himself this week, uh, Jorge Portea, but um, what we have heard from him uh, has been very, very encouraging. They're coming here to win. I haven't seen him. <laughs> yeah, he's not. And, and you normally see all every fighter on the bill. It's, uh, yeah, but this is a good fighter. 152.45 pounds for the challenger, Portea. Well inside. 
well inside and looks in good shape as well. It's in very good shape. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the defending champion. His professional record: 13 wins, only one defeat. He has 15 wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Liverpool, England. Here is the reigning and defending WBA international super welterweight champion, Anthony the Machine. Sean Stevens, foul us get through this test and then get the Fitzgerald rematch. Possibly, that's the big question, but we don't know. What have we, uh, what have we missed here? The oh, mask. Okay. The mask. Jorge Fortea waits uh, patiently. Looks physically great. 21 wins in 24. Here's Anthony Fowler. This will be interesting. This will be interesting. They're all looking. 153.8 pounds Inside. for the champion. 153.8 pounds for Anthony the Machine Fowler. He said that uh, he's doing it different now, and that was one thing I remember in all of our production meetings. Um, not mentioning any age, but Matthew Macklin was like, "Look, I think he's he's wasted it this weight. He's got to go up." Anthony Fowler, Jorge Forte, ten rounds for the WBA International Super Welterweight Championship. I think that shows, though, that he can make it. He can make it. He can make it well. Uh, I'm just going to see if I can grab a word with uh, Jorge Forte. We do like to talk to everybody on the stream. Um, he's just going to. He's just going to put his shirt on uh, and then make his way back. Uh, we're lucky that we have. Kieran, our resident translator here. Okay, just uh, on this cross on the floor here, and you can you can take your mask off for this one. If if you want, yeah, it's just a very quick. Uh, just just on the mark on the floor there. Okay, uh, well inside the weight limit, you look great at the weight. How are you feeling? Sí, ningún problema en llegar al al peso. ¿Cuánto se sientes ahora? ¿Cómo estás? La verdad que me encuentro muy bien, muy cómodo con este peso, lo he dado casi sin problema, porque ya que se había aplazado una fecha y si, ahora siempre me mantengo en el peso, es, creo que es la clave, mantenerse siempre en el peso y estar ahí. Yes, yeah, so I think it's key that it was quite easy for me to make weight at uh, this weight. Um, I feel very comfortable, even though the date was changed, I'm still able to get there and no, no, no issues whatsoever at the moment. So well, thank you very much. We've got 10 rounds in the super featherweight division. And now making his way to the stage, he represents GMG Promotions. His professional record, 17 wins against two defeats. He has three wins coming by way of knockout. He is the former Belgian and European Union super featherweight champion, originally from Gishket, Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan, and now living and fighting out of Verbier, Belgium. Please welcome Farouk Korobadov. You say you haven't seen much of Forte this week. I haven't seen much of Korbanov at all. They very much kept themselves themselves, but they were training last night, um, and we were allowed to watch a tiny little bit of it. Very accomplished, uh, very technically sound. 130 and one half pounds, 130.5 for Korbanov. Yeah, he's decent. 17 wins in 19 fights. Um, he's tough, former EU champion as well. So it's a good yardstick this for Joe Cordina after his long layoff. Now making his way to the stage, his professional record, a perfect one. 11 fights, 11 victories, seven of them coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Cardiff, Wales. He's the former British and the Commonwealth and the reigning WBA International Cruiserweight Champion. Please welcome Joe, the Welsh Wizard, Cordina. I think for Joe Cordina, he just has to hope that the injuries and the lack of momentum and the bad hands is all behind him now because we know how good he is. He just needs momentum. 132.4 for the Welsh Wizard, 132.4 for Joe Cordina. Yeah, he wants to come out of super featherweight now. He is one of the most talented fighters of recent years, but talent is not everything. You need a bit of luck, the hands are a problem. He's been out a bit too long. He needs to get something consistent here in 2021. It's a big year, this, for Joe Cordina, who has the potential to go very far in this sport. But it's only potential at the moment. Yes, he's got a couple of good wins on his record. The Gavin Gwynn looks even better after Gwynn
Hopkins win the other night and uh, yeah I like Cordina a lot talent wise I think he's got a great attitude but is he a hard enough puncher what about the hands is he now at the right weight and it's a tough weight division so a lot of questions to be answered but um, we need a good performance from him against Farouk Korbanov tomorrow night. Joe Cordina, Farouk Korbanov, 10 rounds, super featherweights. Joe. It's just putting his, sorry, uh, those of you that are on the stream and just can hear me shouting, uh, because of the restrictions in the bubble, we kind of floor manage these things ourselves who end up just shouting over each other to try and get people's attention, so apologies. Joe's just going to stick his t-shirt on and make his way over. Um, obviously, we didn't get a chance to catch up with him yesterday. Joe, just on the mark on the floor there, you can keep your mask down for this one. Uh, how do you feel now you've made the weight? Uh, Super featherweight is obviously the division that you're, you're aiming to get towards, working your way down towards that now. How do you feel? Yeah, great. Um, obviously, I'm made one, uh, it was made at 130, uh, 133, it was made up by weighing 132 and a half. Obviously, my first fight back um, for, I think, 16 months. So, yeah, I didn't want to uh, try and kill myself trying to get down. Um, I, when I, I boxed in Monte Carlo, I made it comfortably. So, I just want to, uh, my next fight, uh, take another step closer to that and um, then start sort of getting a plan together and uh, a strategy to make weight. So, yeah, I'm just glad I'm back. Obviously, Saturday night I got a tough fight ahead of me. Um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to it to uh, pick up where I left off. Hand injuries behind you, just how frustrating has that been? Yeah, it's frustrating at, at, at times sitting at home, not being able to punch. And But when I'd done it the first time, there was other things I could work on. My jab, for instance, um, head movement, and other, other things. So yeah, it was uh, it was frustrating, but at the same time, it was a blessing in disguise, um, the pandemic and everything. So it gave me a chance to to get my hand uh, operated on, and now I'm back to 100%. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Go well tomorrow night. Best of luck. Yeah, he's a great guy, Joe Cordina, and. Um Hopes of Wales behind him, of course. I remember talking to Joe Calzaghi many years ago about this guy, and uh, he's 29 now. He looks a little bit older. He looks a little bit more mature, and I'm glad the hands seem to have sorted themselves out. So, because uh, he uh, he could be very good, Andy. We still don't quite know. 11 and 0, but a long way to go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and welcome to the SSC Arena Wembley here in London, England. The official weigh in for Saturday night's incredible night, night of fights. And it's now time to weigh in the main event of the evening. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing. All the action will be televised live around the world on Sky Sports and the Zone. We're sponsored by Bet Fred, Wow Hydrate, and JD Sports. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the official weigh in. 12 rounds of boxing scheduled for the vacant WBO Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Introducing up first to the stage, his professional record, 31 victories. He has two defeats and 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Ouch, Poland, here is the former two-time WBO Cruiserweight Champion of the World. Fourteen four, two hundred pounds is the all important number here. Let's uh, see what we get as he steps on. Shistov Grovatsky from Poland. One ninety five point eight, one hundred and ninety five point eight pounds for Grovatsky. That's very light, 195.8. He's been uh, checking himself on the uh, on the scales pretty much all week when I've seen him, and that's very light, Andy. What does that tell us? Well, he's... and his opponent now making his way to the stage. He's the 2016 Olympian, 
He is undefeated thus far as a professional with a record of 15 wins, no defeats, 12 big wins coming by way of knockout. He's the former British, Commonwealth, European, WBA Continental, and the reigning WBO International Cruiserweight Champion tomorrow night, making his first attempt in a world title, fighting out of and proudly representing Hackney, London, England. What it tells us is the massive size differential between these two. I'd imagine Lawrence to be far nearer. This is a cruiserweight who's going to become a heavyweight. What we see with Gravatsky is he's trained phenomenally hard. He's got the experience. He's got the proven world title status behind him. But that looks a big difference in size and look at them up close. Let uh, Lawrence get his tracksuit top back on and have a quick drink. But I think all of the concerns regarding that frame of Lawrence and squeezing it inside the cruiserweight limit have been allayed. He's been so relaxed all week, so relaxed now. Lawrence, yeah, yeah, yeah. You look, you look great. Uh, how do you feel? Yeah, I feel good. I feel good. It's like, I feel happy, relaxed. Like everything's just so. It's just, yeah, it's just going to be what it's going to be tomorrow, so I'm excited. We make no secret about where your future lies, but Cruiserweight, you're making it comfortably, making it comfortably enough. I mean, I know nothing's easy, but... Yeah, I think, um, like, it's just I enjoy food and I, I can carry extra weight. Um, but when it comes to making weight, I'm obviously disciplined and uh, I train hard, sorry, so the weight's going to come off. You tend not to engage in a long head-to-head. -head. You just have one quick look and then walk away. Um, why is that? I just don't see the point in it personally, you know, you don't gain any advantage. Like, I stared for the longest, so well, every boxer knows you're meant to stare for the so it's, it's, it's meaningless to me. Ultimately, all that matters is the game plan on Saturday, how well he can take my punches, how well I can take keys, and, you know, all the other stuff is just nonsense. You're in fight mode now, but when will you switch? Everyone talks about this switch that fighters have that um, when, when you know it's go time. Uh, when will you change? I'll probably just uh, when I'm in the ring, like, or in, in the changing room as you get closer to the fight, that's when you start to feel a bit more adrenaline and stuff like that. But ultimately, it's not like I change into a different person. I'm just myself just having a fight. You feel this is your time, that the time is now, you've done everything that you needed to do in terms of experience, something that he has a huge advantage um, in terms of the rounds and the fights that he's had compared to you, but do you just feel that this is your time? Yeah, definitely, and I, I, it's not even just about that, it's about the training as well, so I've been training for 12 rounders for, since I've started professional boxing, um, so for me, the experience is it's relative, so I don't think he's been in there with someone who's as tall, powerful, athletic as myself, so we'll see how the experience he's had with other people translates with me, um, so we'll, we'll see. Eddie Hearn has got, I don't want to jinx things, Eddie Hearn's got that belt. Um, I mean, would, would, will you look at it and hold it before you get there or you don't want to sort of jinx uh, things? I, not, not because of jinxing, but I just haven't earned it yet, so I don't really need it. Um, but I'll earn it tomorrow and then uh, it'll have the first moment when it's around my waist. I might do it over the shoulder. I haven't figured that part out yet, but we'll, we'll be fine. Can you get rid of the other one? Like, because your pictures have yeah. been like British, Commonwealth, European, WBA. Um, Is it just this one now until you pick up the others? Or, that's a good know? point. No, I think I'll do all of them, and then when I unify, then it'll be the yeah, we'll two other type. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love this yeah. one step at a time, and yeah. then we're talking about this. Just finally, yeah, everyone's been talking about your punching power. He's been talking about your punching power. Have you got destruction on the mind? Is this fight in your head ending inside the distance? Do you want it to go as quick as you can make it? Yeah, definitely. Um, for me personally, I think it's important that I make a 
good statement. I know he's a good fighter, but I'm just really focused on going in there, um, doing what I have to do to make it long, doing what I have to do to make it explosive. I think um, the reality is when I do hit him, he's going to know about it. So it's just about me making sure I get to that shot without any hiccups on the way there. Brilliant. Go well tomorrow night. Wish you all the best of luck. Eddie, if you could just stay. I mean, um, the silverware is nice. Uh, I'm not talking about the watch. Uh, it's a big night for Lawrence Okoli. Uh, he's not letting on that it is, though. <laughs> he's not letting on that it is. Part of me's over the moon about that, and part of me's quite worried. You know, I think that, like, you know, I come over, I almost want to put the butterflies into him. You know, that's why I come over with this. And, you know, you talk about silverware and. I know the belts get a lot of criticism, but ultimately, you know, this is a belt that is held by uh, Anthony Joshua, that's held by um, Terence Crawford, that has been held by Manny Pacquiao, by Floyd Mayweather, by Canelo Alvarez, you know, Billy Joe Saunders has got this belt, Demetrius Andre, so, so many amazing fighters have got a piece of, of, of this world championship. And, you know, for him, you'd think that he was fighting for a Southern Area title fight tomorrow night. He's that cool, he's that laid back. Now, is that because he truly believes in himself and he really believes that he's going to do the business tomorrow night? Or is that because it hasn't dawned on him yet? And you need to be ready. You've got to be ready for Glavatsky. You know, you could see up there, he's experienced. It's all business. It's, it, you know, sometimes when you stand in the middle of two fighters, every now and again, I'll just look down at the chest, right? Sometimes you can see the heart beating out from the chest. Both these guys, you know, I had a little glance, you couldn't even see it. So what that tells you is, Glavatsky, Glavatsky knows what's in front of him. I guess their training team is saying, look, this kid can punch, but you know, he's never been in at this kind of level. He's, he might not be able to fight on the inside. He might get tired after six rounds. He might not have a great chin. And they're all the questions that we want answering tomorrow night. But we're going to see it, and, and this is where you see it. But you know, if, if you take anything from Lawrence's body language, it's business as usual, tomorrow night, I'm crowned world champion. Is there any worries that one thing that you have seen, and this is um, a product of no easy, no easy fights, no easy nights, but the right-hand side of the card, just recently, has been the most dangerous side of the mm. card. Warrington, that was a huge upset against uh, Lara. Avanesian, that wasn't an upset, but he was in the Still away corner the against, yeah. yeah, you know, he was Valenzuela under, against Yeah, Valenzuela. Yeah. Um, it's, it seems to have levelled everything up. I don't know if it's just because the matches are more competitive think, yeah. or if actually lockdown boxing, it, the, the right-hand side come with so much more belief that they're going to do it. A bit of everything. I think, firstly, the environment's different. You know, the away fighters aren't under as much pressure uh, from the crowd. And, you know, sometimes that spurs them on. Sometimes it can deflate them. Um, but I do think, you know, it's a conscious effort from us as well. We now have a product on TV that isn't backed up by 10 or 15,000 screaming people with an incredible atmosphere. So we need to concentrate more on the fights and the product. And it still comes down with, if you're good enough, you'll win. Mm. You know, on the night, Josh Warrington wasn't good enough to beat Lara. Uh, Josh Kelly wasn't good enough to beat Avenesian. Robbie Davis wasn't good enough. That's sport. So we need these competitive fights. If you're good enough, on all levels in sport, you will win. So tomorrow night, yeah, Cody doesn't have the O2 and 10,000 people behind him. I don't think that would bother Even Glavatsky. Even that he had in Yeah, December. exactly. Well, it will be different. And people keep saying, oh, he's got the experience. He boxed over there before. You've been there. That night for AJ was very different to our complete behind closed door event. Mm -hmm. So this is a real genuine fight. And sometimes people can question when you win a vacant title, you know, have you really earned it? You beat Christoph Glavatsky, you deserve to be world champion. And... If he wins tomorrow night, he'll be rightfully crowned world champion. I'm nervous, I'm excited. You know, excited for Lawrence, but also excited to see. To see, you know, when these young kids step up, we can build them up as much as they want. They can have their rap music, you know, they can release their book. But when it comes down to fight night, it's just sport. And if you're good enough, you win. If you're not, you don't. And hopefully, tomorrow night, Lawrence Cody's good enough. Just before you go, um, you ha as far as I'm aware, one thing that you haven't done, and you've got your fingers in a lot of different pies, but you haven't been in a rap video. Were you, were you asked to be in the Akoli rap video? Would you um, welcome uh, an addition to his next single, perhaps, you know, I don't know, driving the car or flying the plane or something? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, obviously you would have seen me in the Canelo ring walk lately, Jay Balvin, uh, he's asked me to be in a few videos. Um, you know, and I, I, I feel as though I should be supporting Lawrence, but... You know, shout out to, you know, my guys, Rick Ross, who, who rapped in uh, um, KSI in the ring. I sort of cave in first dibs at it all. So, 
I don't know. I've got to be a little bit careful I don't upset the rap scene, but I'm here to support Lawrence and, you know, we have to see where it takes us. Also, do you know how many people are talking about the pyjamas? Uh, and yeah. so many people don't know the backstory to the pyjamas. They just think that you, off your own back, took the chance to do the Canelo... Well, I've got an update on the pyjamas. Please, can you just give the context and then the update okay. as well? So, when Canelo boxed Callum Smith, he came to the weigh-in in his pyjamas. So I said to the team, I wonder how much those pyjamas are. So I started Googling Dolce Gabbana pyjamas. He came over, he said, oh, what are you looking at? And I said, um, sort of just trying to find out how much those pyjamas were. And he went, do you want some? And I went, I mean, he can pull it off. You know what I mean? He's got like three buttons undone, little gold chain, six pack. Obviously on my side, it's not so pretty. Uh, and I said to him, look, I'm probably a treble XL, to be honest with you, in the, in the, in the pyjamas. And we just laughed anyway. He won the fight. As I was leaving the hotel, one of his guys came up to me and said, Canelo's got a present for you. Big Dolce Gabbana bag, come in. And these were even more garish than his. I mean, I mean they had Dolce Gabbana <laughs> all over them. So I said to him, I'm gonna wear these at the next weigh-in. So next weigh-in, I stood to my word, I wore them. Just an update on the situation. And I was joking about Rick Ross and uh, P Diddy. I have spoken to Dolce Gabbana who obviously sales in that pajama range have just gone through the absolute roof, Rot. right? <laughs> just, they're, they're just continuing. Gonna, they're going to they're give me another set for the next weigh-in, for the next Canelo event on May the 8th. So this is great news. Yeah. And, you know, I think there's a lot of talk at the moment, isn't there, about, you know, the bigger guy, right? You see these Dolce Gabbana models, six packs, it's overrated. There's nothing wrong with a little bit of love handles and chest hair, right? So I think I'm representing all the 40-year-old middle-aged men out there who haven't quite been able to crack it in the gym and we just accept to ourselves we love our food we embrace ourselves and if we want to turn up in Dolce Gabbana pajamas every now and again so be it exactly a man of the people thank you so much for coming on uh, I really don't really know where we're going with that uh, Let's end it there. <laughs> Let's end it there. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, if you haven't switched off already, thank you for staying on. Uh, you're probably wondering what you're watching. So join us tomorrow. Sky Sports Action from 7 o'clock. It's the big night. It's the night of destiny. Lawrence Sokoli, Christoph Gravatsky for the WBO Cruiserweight title. Eddie Hearn's got it on his arm there. That's what's up for grabs. Quality undercard as well. So come and join us. You are, I promise you, you will enjoy it. And there'll be no more talk of silk pyjamas. <laughs>